Hello, my name's Bev and I'm the author of the book Please Eat, A Mother's Struggle to Free Her Teenage Son from Anorexia, which describes our family's battle with the deadly eating disorder, anorexia nervosa, which my teenage son Ben developed back in 2009 when he was just 15 years old. This post from the 12th of June 2011 is called Finding Workable Solutions to Impossible problems. One thing you quickly learn as the parent of a teenager with anorexia or another eating disorder is that the most obvious and logical solutions to problems aren't workable. For one thing, at what I call the high anorexia stages, anorexia changes the mindset from normal logical to totally illogical and irrational. Anorexics will swear that black is white and believe it. Logic tells you this is not true and never will be, so what do you do? This is just one of the impossible problems you regularly get with anorexia. An example of this might be the number one problem, which is child is losing weight fast, they need to eat more to put the weight back on, so the logical solution would be to ensure they eat more food. Sorted, right? Haha, <laughs> no way. We've been finding creative ways around this problem for months and some solutions have proved more successful than others. Also, the way you approach things is key. I found a very subtle and discreet approach often works better than an, an enforced approach and over the months I've developed a range of little tricks that I bring into play whenever I need to. One of the most obvious tricks has been the recovery contracts. Of course, it's not really a trick. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful tool. And the idea is that Ben and I agree this together rather than it being seen as me imposing my will on him. But of course it was me that instigated the contract. I wanted to test it out no matter what. Thankfully Ben thought it was a good idea right from the start. So there wasn't any need for a plan B, a plan C, a plan D or whatever. Another major problem you'll come across is of the as a parent, I can't stand this any longer. I can't handle this. Let him, her, get stick thin and end up in hospital for all I care variety. With me, this kind of thinking was usually accompanied by me in floods of tears, curling up in bed or in some corner, usually following an almighty scene with Ben or just when the stress got too much for me. Now, we all know that, unfortunately, caring for an anorexic teenager isn't something you can opt out of. You have to go on, you have no choice. No matter how impossible or how hard it may seem, you basically have no choice. So you have to think of yet another creative solution to an impossible problem with various plan Bs, Cs, Ds, etc. just in case. I always smile when I think of the standard question in job interviews, i.e. Do you see yourself as a problem solver? Ha 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 ha, they should try solving our problems as parents of anorexic teenagers. Now that's what I call a real problem solver. So which solution works in case of Ben not being able to go into school? We decided that Ben would go into school when he felt able to and when he'd had a reasonable night's sleep. This would be either a full morning or a part morning. Because of the school dinners problem, food, social and standing around doing nothing for the full day, I'd pick him up at lunchtime every day and some days he didn't go in at all. With the help of the school, I set up a system with school staff whereby Ben took work home or lesson notes home. I would also email staff on problem days and they'd email work to me for Ben to do. Meanwhile, to overcome the potential problem of Ben not completing the year or flunking it, we applied to a local school sixth form for Ben to redo the year, starting September 2011. Ben got a place and the school 
has agreed to keep our application open until Ben gets his AS exam level results in August. Hopefully we won't need to take them up on this offer, but it's there just in case. Throughout the term, I constantly tested the water to see if Ben was ready to do full days. Then, at Easter, as Ben was in a bit of a rut, to say the least, and didn't seem to be making any progress on any front, I introduced the contract. The contract has achieved several things, including making Ben more relaxed because everything is agreed and written down, including food and exercise, so he's not worrying about it in the middle of the night. As a result, he started sleeping much better because before this he was a total insomniac, which compounded the problem of trying to get him to school. Because Ben now gets points for being in school part or full mornings, it's encouraged him to be in school more, so much so that by the start of this term, he was doing full mornings every day. By adjusting the contract yesterday to encourage full days and adequate school dinners, we're hoping that Ben will start full days at school. But as we parents know, with anorexia, it's often a case of the best laid plans and all that. So I accept that he may not succeed right away. However, at this stage in the recovery, I'm less inclined to make it easy for Ben to opt out of school. So I will need to be a little stricter. A case of being a very teeny weeny bit cruel to be kind but I'll cross that bridge if or when we come to it. Another thing with anorexia is that you can't rush recovery. Solutions take a long time to yield results or show you need to bring an alternative solution into play. And unfortunately, that's just the way it is. But there you go. And that's the end of that post. I hope, I hope that post might have thrown up some, some ideas on how to solve all the difficult problems, especially the problem of school. And it's really just having plans A, B, C, D, etc, etc in place. If one doesn't work, you move on to the next. If that doesn't work, you move on to the next and so on and so forth. I mean, it's not an ideal world. Of course it's not. And you get times when... There seems to be no no solution. I remember once sitting around in, in Ben's large bedroom with a load of pieces of paper strewn across the floor as between us we tried to come to a solution to a particular problem. I can't remember what the problem was, but it seemed to be something that had no answers. So we just had various solutions sort of strewn across the floor, a bit like a business meeting. Um, and I can't remember, to be honest, what conclusion we came to. And uh, But I just remember the, sitting there surrounded by pieces of paper and discussing it with Ben. And that's the great thing. It's, it's talking, talking. That's one thing Ben and I always did. We talked, we talked, we went for walks and we talked. And as I've said before, initially I felt like I was banging my head against a brick wall. Nothing seemed to go in. But gradually it was like a thaw and it did start to go in and it did start to bear fruit, especially um, when I had the CAMS team. Well, I say the CAMS team, I mean the psychiatrist really right behind me on doing things like rolling out the contract. Um, I just felt this great sense of momentum, though, at this stage in June 2011, And although it was going to be punishingly slow, I mean, Ben was going to be with CAMS until the following spring. And after that, um, there was still a whole ton of issues to to fix. But I just felt much more positive in June 2011 with this feeling that things were moving forward after all this time. So, yeah, thank you for listening to my ramblings and I'll catch up in the next video. You'll find a link below to my blog and you'll also find a link to my website where you can download free PDFs of my blog and also a link to Amazon where you can buy a copy of my book.